Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is John and in this video, we're going to talk about the record-breaking GDP growth that Malaysia just announced on the 12th of August, just last Friday, uh, quarter 2 2022 numbers, 8.9%. Uh, amazing figure. I think it was the best figure uh, for countries around the region. And as an investor, why do we use this number? We use this number because it is an indication, a coincidental indicator of the economic health and status of a particular country. Uh, who uses these figures? Central banks around the world actually uses this figure to determine monetary and fiscal policies moving forward. And if you stay till the end of the video, I'm going to show you how Buffett actually used the GDP numbers for his valuations of uh, certain stock markets and certain countries around the world. So stay tuned and stay till the end. 8.9%, a commendable feat for the growth uh, quarter on quarter for the Malaysian GDP. However, you have to remember that this is a number starting from a low base from the lockdowns of last year. It is also aided by a few things. Uh, I can think off the top of my head and it's not exhaustive. Um, the stimulus that the government allowed for withdrawals uh, from the Employee Provident Fund. Um, secondly, also the Panjana Fund that the government injected and also a pent-up demand, the third thing, pent-up demand from consumers who have undergone uh, long periods of lockdown and they are now starting to open up. Last but not least, also the opening up of the Malaysian economy on the 1st of April. That really aided in uh, kick-starting the economy back into shape. Before that, I do need to clarify the difference in between real and nominal GDP. So the number that I've just mentioned, 8.9%, is a nominal GDP growth. However, if it is inflation adjusted, the number you should be looking at is the real GDP growth and which it was reported at 5% instead of 8.9%. So that 5% is actually an inflation adjusted number. So what is GDP? In short, it is a measure of the total goods and services produced within the borders of a country within a certain period of time. Now, it is generally used also as an economic indicator of the health of the country and the central banks around the world, the World Bank, IMF, they use it to actually determine fiscal and monetary policies for a certain country. Now, how often is it measured? It is usually measured on a quarterly basis and the Department of Statistics actually is the body responsible for measuring them. So there's actually three ways of calculating GDP. Uh, it is through an income, a production or an expenditure approach. Now for Malaysia, the Statistics Department has actually calculated it from the production and expenditure approach. So if we use the expenditure approach to calculate GDP, there's actually four components that we look for. The first one is private consumption. The second thing is government spending. The third is actually business spending. And the last but not least is export and import of goods. So using the expenditure approach, let's take a look at the reported numbers on Friday. Uh, private final consumption expenditure, uh, no surprise, took up the bulk of the growth uh, at 18.3%, uh, followed by gross fixed capital formation, a very sexy name for business investments at 5.8%. Um, government was, uh, expenditure was very, very low, 2.6% growth. And the exports and imports, even though imports was more on this quarter, uh, Malaysia still maintains a very good trade surplus. Uh, that means the exports of the country is actually more than the import value of the country. So diving a little bit deeper into the private consumption and breakdown by components, you can see highlighted on the screen, transportation and actually recreational services and culture took the biggest chunk of the growth rate. No surprise, the extended MCO just uh, extended a lot of pent up demand. And um, with the opening of the economy on the 1st of April, everyone just, you know, wanted to travel. I'm pretty sure yourself or even your friends and family members, um, the moment the uh, 1st of April was announced, I'm pretty sure a lot of them were like birds that were just released from the cage, right? And it's a good thing because as a conclusion, we can conclude that the economy is growing. Uh, the government uh, are putting in measures to kickstart the economy from a very battered 2021 year. So uh, in short, as an investor, it's a healthy sign that uh, markets are actually going to earn back uh, the lost income that they've made in 2021. So I hope that quick crash course gave you an overall picture of how GDP is actually calculated and why is it important for us as investors 
to actually understand the inner workings of it and help us build better mental models uh, to invest our money better. So if this content you think has uh, brought you value, do consider you know, subscribing to my channel, hitting that like button and you know, uh, hitting that notification bell so that if new videos are out, you'll be notified as well. So knowing how to calculate GDP, how do we apply or use it as an investor? In 2001, uh, the famous value investor Warren Buffett, uh, in an article co-authored with Carol Loomis, he actually proposed an uh, indication or a measure, which is just the total market value of public listed companies within a country, divided, dividing that number with an annualized GDP. And um, that, if you draw in parallel, is very similar to a price to earnings ratio of a specific public listed company, where in this case, total market value of all the listed companies is equivalent to the market cap or the share price of a particular company. And analyzed GDP is equivalent to the total net profit or earnings per share of a particular company. Now, he has used this indicator to quite good effect because if you look at this chart from the 1990s until um, August 12, uh, 2022, you get an indication of whether market valuations are actually frothy or market valuations are at its trough. As you can see, the internet bubble in the early 2000s um, actually shown that, you know, the moment this ratio is very high, exceeding more than 100 or 200 uh, percent, it is actually a, a rough indication that the market valuation is actually very, very, very frothy or very, very overvalued. And the moment the financial crisis happened in 2008, as you can see, it was well below that of uh, the 100% mark. And therefore, it's a good indication for market bottoming in terms of valuation. And in Malaysia's case, as you can see, the peak happened throughout 1995 to 1997. And that was when the Asian financial crisis actually happened. So right now, we're... I would say Malaysia's um, Buffett indicator, equivalent, it's at, at a very median or even slightly low base in terms of valuation. That's not to say that you know it's a it's a perfect time to en uh, to enter. Uh, I do feel that there are certain pockets within the market that are undervalued. Again, based on industries, based on specific companies, but I think it is a please use this as a gauge to know whether markets are frothy. Or markets are you know um there's pockets of um undervalued companies that you should go start picking and hunting um again as i said this is not a very accurate or indicative measure that you should time uh, your entry into the market because you have to remember in terms of gdp calculation it includes total businesses that means listed and unlisted sme companies and in malaysia roughly about 60%, 50 to 60% of the uh, economic contribution is contributed by SMEs. So therefore, in terms of market capitalization, it is actually uh, neg uh, uh, neglecting all this SME uh, con contribution to the economy. So therefore, um, while it is used as a rough indication, please do not use it for specific timing, uh, entry and exits into the market. So to conclude, I've actually gone through a quick crash course on the components of GDP and how you calculate it. And I've also shown you the Buffett indicator, an uh, indication that uh, he uses to determine whether market valuations are actually at the frothy level or whether they're at the bottom. Now, this is not a perfect indicator, as I mentioned in the video. It just helps you to determine overall sentiment of the market, whether they're frothy or whether they're at, uh, at the bottom. And I do hope that this has helped broaden your thinking on using market indicators to help you better invest your money. So if you like this kind of content, do consider subscribing to my channel. Please give it a like, uh, share it with your friends and family, uh, especially to those who you think it can benefit uh, their um, investing journey. And uh, I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video. See you.